Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the diverter valve on 2.0 turbo engines. So like I said, we're going to be looking at the failure of the diverter valve on two liter FSI engines. There's a lot of different names that people use for this. Some people call it a turbo cutoff valve. That's actually what the parts catalog calls it. Some people call it a turbo recirculation valve. And some people mistakenly, but not really, call it a blow off valve. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, Deutsche Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, great pricing, a ton of really awesome DIYs. They actually have a DIY for this exact part that I'll put a link into the show notes for you guys. So check them out at shopdap.com. So let's start off like we do every failed parts video with what the heck does this do? Well, the diverter valve is part of the turbocharger system. If your vehicle is under boost and let's say you let off the throttle, the throttle will close, that boost pressure needs to go somewhere. This actually allows that boost pressure to bleed off. And because it's a diverter valve, it diverts that back into the air intake stream. <laughs> I made mention that uh, some people call these blow off valves and it's not quite right, but not quite wrong either. The difference between this and a blow off valve, this will recirculate it back into the airstream where a blow off valve will let that excess boost pressure out into the atmosphere. And a quick tip, you can replace your diverter valve with a blow off valve, but only if you have the ECM tuned. Your ECM is gonna be looking for that recirculated air and if we're venting it to atmosphere, we may cause a drivability issue or a check engine light, or maybe both. On most of these 2.0 turbos, these are located right on the turbocharger. I think the only exception is the Golf R where it's located just in front of the intake manifold. And the best place to see this is actually looking from the bottom up at the turbo. This is also one of those parts that's been updated and updated and updated. I think we're on version D at this point. The generations look considerably different. This one here is a G, this one here is a C, and I think there's been about five total revisions of this part. Now the TSI, the newer turbocharged cars, like the CCTA, and the FSI, the BPY engine, both use the same diverter valve. So how do they work? Well, it's a simple solenoid controlled by the ECM. And basically, it'll either seal boost pressure like it is here or vent boost pressure like it is here. How do diverter valves fail? Well, it's a rupture of the rubber diaphragm. Between the heat and the oil that can get on the rubber diaphragm, it'll break down over time and cause tiny tears. Now, that's really the only way I've ever seen these fail. I've never seen one actually fail electronically. I have seen the rubber diaphragm split and cause oil to leak out of the connector housing. But for the most part, it's going to be a tear of this rubber diaphragm. How do we know we may have a bad diverter valve? Odds are you're gonna get a check engine light. And that can be almost any code related to an underboost issue. Codes like P0299 and P0234 are both underboost conditions and can be related to the diverter valve. I've also seen system lean codes point to a tear in the diverter valve as well. Generally with the system lean, the diaphragm's torn and there's a ton of oil that comes out of the connector when you disconnect it. Which may mean you need to repin the connector or just clean it out really well depending on the level of oil saturation inside the connector. As far as drivability concerns, you may see low boost, maybe the vehicle feels underpowered, or you might actually even hear a little bit of extra noise because the diaphragm is torn. On the older stuff, like the older 1.8 turbos on Golf Beetle Jetta, you could clearly hear when a diverter valve went bad. A lot of people like the sound. It sounded kind of like you had a blow off valve because it made it a little loud and kind of trailed off at the end as it let out, but it was a sure sign that the diverter valve was failing. How do we diagnose this? Well, if we have a check engine light and any kind of underboost related fault, this is usually the first thing we want to check. The easiest way to do that is to climb up underneath the car and look at it. Look at what the part number is. If it's not a part number D, this is probably the best place to start. You can also remove it and see if it looks like this. See if the diaphragm's torn. Even if it's the older style like this where maybe the diaphragm doesn't look torn, I would go ahead and replace it with the newest revision anyway. And this is actually a pretty easy DIY. I'd mentioned in the beginning of the show that Deutsche Auto has done a DIY on this part. So again, I'll put a link in the show notes. It's basically three bolts, three five millimeter Allens. I will caution you that they are in there with thread locker. So you want to take your time on taking these bolts out. I also recommend making sure you do this with a cold engine because it does get pretty hot right there and you can easily burn yourself. I also don't recommend that you try and break these bolts loose with a ball end Allen because that can lead to a stripped out Allen bolt. So 
Use a regular Allen to break them loose, and then you can use a ball in to twist the bolts all the way back out. Again, the newest revision is a D. As you can see, it looks quite a bit different than the C and the G. This is one of the parts where Volkswagen has very weird lettering at the end of their part number. Normally, when revisions come out, it's A, then B, then C, then D. This one was kind of all over the place. And there's been a ton of revisions, so like I said, right now we're on revision D. If you're running into a boost issue or a system lean issue, and you don't have revision D, Definitely pull this out and take a look at it and probably plan to replace it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. Hey, one thing, shout out to the boys at Apex Tuning for hooking me up with these diverter valves. It's been a while since I've replaced one of these, but I know there's still a bunch out there that haven't been replaced with the newest revision. So thank you guys for hooking me up with these parts. So if you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. No beer of the day. I'm actually drinking coffee, cold coffee, and not in that good, like, iced coffee way, just like it sat out.